Welcome to the Imperator Rome Abridged Campaign Part 1, the fourth video in this series, just to make things very confusing. You can check the playlist if you don't know what I'm talking about. For this campaign, I'm going to play an easy one. After many failures in this game, I decided to see more of the game by just picking a faction where you win. And the one I chose was Kush, a particularly easy faction for various reasons, and we're going to throw it on easy difficulty. Not quite sure what the numbers, the extra bonus stuff it gives you there are, or how important they are, I should say. But it's probably going to be easier than before in some way. So here we are as Kush. Now, one of the things that makes Kush particularly easy, I think, is the terrain around them. Out here in the desert, the terrain is all arranged in long strips. So it's very easy to choke point people and to not have very many people bordering you. And because we're the biggest blob in this area, we can simply kill the smaller blobs at any time and it's going to be very hard for them to do anything about it, either tactically or diplomatically. We can just absorb them into our blob. Therefore, let's do that right now. We've moved up in the world, we now have access to 22,000 troops, up from the usual like two to 6,000 we've seen before playing as other factions, and that's just because our main province has a gigantic population. So these other blobs, with their smaller population, who aren't allowed to deploy more troops, well, what can they do? I don't think they have any options in this situation, they just have to lose. So here's me, causing the faction next door to us to lose, this blue faction is in a little annex behind us because further down the river the terrain just becomes impassable. So this is an extra safe little pocket for us to capture, might as well just have it. It's a matter of time. Once that time has passed, we're going to access a game mechanic I hadn't really needed to consider before, aggressive expansion. This number up here is kind of the game's way of stopping you from just killing absolutely everybody. You get this rising expansion penalty every time you take some territory, which destabilizes you and gives you a variety of debuffs, essentially. But that penalty will go away over time, so it encourages you to take it easy, have a nice pace, wait every time you've killed somebody until you kill the next person. You could just immediately send your army off to conquer the next guy as well. But no, we are going to sit around for a bit and make people forget what we did and such. In that time, I decided to click around and look at our territory, a very long, thin territory, with various cities and a lot of people in it. I also spent some time kind of looking through the building system. Previously, I hadn't had the money to care much about the building system, but now that we're kind of rich, we're probably going to be actually making some buildings. I don't have any sort of good feel for what the meta with buildings is, and what things are really useful and what things aren't, and where they're useful. There are so many different numbers right here to consider, and all the buildings do so many different things. It's hard to work out what a good strategy might be. Although I can fall back on my usual strategy from Total War, which is to not really build anything and just take the AI's territory and use whatever they built. That way you don't have to think about it, and at least you're not going to be worse than what the AI did by selecting things ignorantly. I'm sure the AI has some logic programmed into it. Well, who knows actually. So here we are, moving towards another neighbour of ours. Looks like they only have 4,000 troops. So again, not sure they can stop us from killing them. While we're doing it, we get interrupted by this. I'm more and more sure, the more I play this game, that they really need to separate the text adventure elements from the map game elements. Because you're always being interrupted while doing something on the map, and then you have to think about something else and remember who all of these background characters are, who you can't really see in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, they're just people in your court. You do things to them, they become loyal, disloyal, all kinds of debuffs and buffs going on, and then you go back to the map game and try to remember what you were doing there. I'm really sure there would be some way to separate them out and have the text adventure happen in separate periods, maybe every time a new ruler is elected you use the text adventure to decide what they're like, or something like that. Well, on the map game portion, we've absolutely annihilated somebody else and taken all of their stuff. And of course every time we take somebody's stuff, it becomes easier to take the next guy over stuff. And we're going to immediately plan for that, there's a small green faction right here. Once we kill them, there'll be even more factions around them to conquer. So we'll just keep going and see if the aggressive expansion thing does anything bad to us along the way. 
Handily, the green faction I was planning to attack actually took over some more territory just before I attacked them. So that's great, now my claim on their old territory will also apply to the new stuff as well, we can just get on in there. They're allied to the guys to their right, but that's fine as well, because if they get pulled into the war, we can take their territory as well. So really, it would be good to fight everybody over here at the same time in one big war. But we are going to do it a little bit more piecemeal. That's all fine, and as for the military side, well, there are no risks really, aside from this little issue. I had a separate detachment of only 2,000 number, and the enemy have 3,000. And then we have to try and get away from battle as the enemy pursue them. My big armies are busily doing other things, not in the right position to help as this happened. Inconvenient. And we're not able to escape either. We end up being forced into a battle and then losing it. So there you go. Even a small number in the right place can make all the difference in the world. Although, not really, because while they'll win that battle and gain some war score, they're going to lose all their territory and inevitably lose a battle once my main army makes contact with them, which happened after they went into my territory for some counter-conquest. Somebody went over there to deal with that. And in the midst of dealing with it, there are more text adventure interruptions. I just wanted to go away. I just want to do one thing at a time. Well, maybe that's just me. I was actually following along and generally knowing what was going on with all of the text adventure stuff I seem to recall. I'm not really going to talk about it in this campaign unless it becomes very relevant. This war got a bit messy due to the fact that the faction we're fighting had a rebel faction, or the ally of the faction we're fighting actually, and this rebel faction started taking over half the same stuff I was taking over. That's why some stuff is occupied pink and other parts by like grey. Because of this, we need to be at war with the rebels as well to totally sweep the whole area clean, but we don't have Cassus Belli against them. We can, though, do a no Cassus Belli declaration of war. This comes with tons of debuffs. In particular, you lose a load of stability, which then gives you ongoing debuffs. Well, I just did it anyway. I want to get these rebels out of the picture, if only to win our original war, because they're occupying territory that I need to occupy to get my original war's war score up to finish it successfully. So it kind of had to go this way. And as for the war itself, well, as you might guess, we're going to win because they only have like 2,000 troops or fewer than that even. So soon, we've taken this big ring of territory from the original guys we were attacking, and a couple of blocks are still there because they belong to the rebels. This causes the rebel faction to become the real faction we were just fighting as well. So now we're going to fight them for a second time, and we also defeat them, as you might guess. That's that then. Now we've taken this big blob and added it to our empire. Glorious. We've got plenty of aggressive expansion, low stability, and generally a civic situation to deal with. Things are going to get a bit more technical now, as I need to go through this block I've taken and work out what's going on with some more game mechanics, because the Axumites, this area, are a different culture to us. We are the Meroites from the west part of our blob. So now that we have a big, different culture in our empire, they're going to be really unhappy and rebellious. The provinces were constantly losing loyalty, which is essentially counting down to a rebellion that will happen, like with the Civil War thing. We need to make them happy in some way. I went around reading a whole bunch of tooltips and generally exploring this little province menu. There's all sorts of things in there to find. And it eventually led me to look for a culture menu, which I then found. And here's what we need to deal with. You can see the Axumite group with a hundred pops at the bottom there. And now a decent portion of our population and their happiness rating is 7%, not very high. Even our mainstream culture isn't that high either, probably because we're some sort of slaving society. There's plenty of slaves who are unhappy, bringing the average down. How inconvenient. Well, there are some things we can do in this menu, for the foreign cultures at least. You can start treating them less badly, effectively. The goal is to integrate a culture. Although actually the more cultures you integrate, the lower the overall happiness of all your cultures get. So it's a bit of a balancing act. But by default, new cultures get treated like pure trash, and you can start enacting laws to make them more equal with your existing mainstream cultures. Doing so comes with debuffs, of course. In particular, 
you'll lose stability, so I can allow the Aksumites to marry the Meroites, but that will destabilize society and it's already not that stable. So we need to play things a bit carefully and gradually try to give them some kind of rights and one day make them normal citizens. This should stop them from rebelling, maybe not of course, we'll see. Now while that's going on, we've got some more wars to pursue. Not only are we being invaded by barbarians, which isn't too much to deal with, but I want to conquer our way to the sea and generally take all of the other nearby Aksumite pops into our empire so we can get our borders up to the sea and up to some convenient stopping points. Later, here we are. We've got the sea and passages of uninhabited terrain leading off. No particularly big looking borders to deal with. We're in a nice little pocket of the entire map, but a gigantic pocket full of riches as well. Quite a nice position to just sit and do nothing really. But I'll probably do something for the sake of the game. We are currently being invaded by some barbarians again. They just spawn from the uninhabited areas. I can't raise up the local levy to fight them because it was up too recently fighting whoever used to control those port areas. So I need to wait for them to show up. Those uninhabitable areas or uninhabited areas do lead off to other factions. So we do effectively border them. We can just walk down there and invade other people at the other ends and start taking territory in other areas. The other thing we'll want to do is turn ourselves into a maritime power. Now that we have control of some sea, we can throw some ships out and we could use them to put troops in various places. We're surrounded by quite a few other small factions that are smaller blobs than us. So we can continue to gobble at our leisure, I think. The one thing we don't want to do is look towards the main part of the map because up there, we've got the Egyptian Empire and the Seleucid Empire, both of which are even bigger blobs than us. We're somewhat destined to be at war with Egypt at some point because we do border them along the Nile and we kind of have to go through them to get anywhere else. We can go around the edge of Arabia, but that would get us to the Seleucid Empire, which would be an even more difficult opponent. But suffice to say, for now, all I want to do is eat everybody that's small around me, which will be adding more and more cultures to our list here. We've already added another one since getting the Aksumites. And it is going to cost us plenty of civic stuff to bring them in successfully. I'm going to be doing it at least to the Aksumites because we have so many of their population in our culture. Our average happiness and loyalty might go up if we integrate them. If anyone knows a good integration meta strategy, let me know, although it will of course be too late. Another interesting thing I was looking at just here is that you can change your state religion's pantheon to include the gods of other cultures that you've conquered. So we could take some of Axum's gods and their gods will do different things for us. So we could try and mix and match. Maybe that would help with cultural integration as well. I don't remember what I ended up going for. I think I did switch them up a little bit and then just stopped looking at it and decided to not play with it too much. Here's a little look at the top end of our empire where we almost meet Egypt. We actually don't quite board them because there's some uninhabited territory between us and them. This blue faction is a buffer between us and Egypt proper right now, probably for the better. Now I've got this message saying I can actually colonize part of this uninhabited territory. Now all I need to do is click around until I work out how to do it. And it actually didn't take that long, definitely faster than some of my initial Imperator Rome Where's the Button quests. So there we go, we've actually gained another territory for free, well I think one of my pops moved in there. The most important thing though, is that this new region we've taken is technically in another province. So you know what that means, we just got 2000 troops for free. This is Upper Egypt, everything else is Lower Egypt. So if we throw a governor in there, we can raise a levy from this one pop corner and it will have 2000 troops thanks to some magic. Very handy. I'm going to leave things be up here for as long as possible. We don't want to touch that buffer faction. They're probably doing a good job stopping Egypt having border friction with us or something. We'll focus on stuff to the east in the future. I also discovered this though, the mission screen. I had seen the missions button before, but I never clicked on it thinking, well, I haven't received any missions. There'll be nothing in there. Turns out it works the other way around. You go into the mission screen to pick what your missions should be. Here was a mission based around building up your home territory by doing various things. And if you do certain combinations of things as instructed here, 
you'll get a few bonuses like some added populations and buildings appearing for free, all kinds of helpful stuff, so this is better than making the economy on your own to go down the mission's directions. And I think the game should have leaned into this much more heavily because this is more like it. If this stuff was on the map visibly all the time, like little pop-ups saying, do you want to build a bridge here or a library, here's what happens if you do each, things like that. Just opportunities that are appearing instead of the pop-ups with the text adventure stuff. I think the shaping of your kingdom and empire would feel a lot more hands-on and be more visible on the map. Well, you know, I'm just fantasizing about playing a better map game while playing this, although this one does lean more into nation building more heavily than most map games I've played, and I think it's actually pretty good for that. I can't think off the top of my head of a better example of one you can do things like politics and micromanaging the building of your stuff in and cultural integration. That's all pretty in-depth stuff. I just still don't really like it. I feel like in some way the recipe needs to be changed to improve it to make it all worthwhile and all fit together the puzzle of this big complicated game. Looks like my king's about to die, so there's probably going to be some kind of succession crisis drama coming out of that. I'm going to leave this part here, because like with my recent Stellaris series, I'm cutting so much out of the gameplay that there's not that much to actually say, so I'll make shorter episodes than usual. A lot of the time outside of war is spent just waiting for something to happen, such as a resource to go up, a stability to go up, or an integration to go through, all kinds of things. And I would talk about my decision making when it came to that, but it was actually quite arbitrary. I don't really know what I'm doing, so I've got no particular in insight to offer on when a good time to integrate Axum might be. I'll just do it at some point, that kind of thing. But when it comes to the military strategy, at least I know a little bit of what to do, because I know what numbers are bigger than other numbers, and that should help me get through. Well, we'll find out. There's going to be more of this Imperator campaign, unlike my other Imperator campaigns. So join me for part two. I'm going to go off to the right of the screen and kill some other small factions until everything falls apart and we get civil wars and the like.